Hi flower friends, welcome back for another DIY floral arrangement where we'll design together week by week beautiful flowers. I'm gonna be designing again today in our mason jar arrangement. This is a fun one. I feel like I always say that, but this one's extra fun. Our um, foliage is this lovely magnolia. Very evocative of the holidays, I think. We've got some gold sprayed seeded eucalyptus. It's a little bit exciting and different. For our focal flower, ooh, this is one of my favorites. Protea, it's a mink protea. And these grow in um, places like Australia, really warm, arid climates. And uh, they're just stunning. If you've ever seen a king protea version of this, mega version of this, it's just as beautiful. So I'm really excited that we get to play with this today. We have some carnations, really pretty peach, kind of play on that pink color with our protea and then some white ilex this is a great berry um, to design with because they don't drop some berries will fall um, <clears throat> uh, i may have said ilex but this is hypericum so compared to ilex i love this because the berries don't drop they don't get all over the place really um, reliable way to add texture to your arrangement. We have Lysianthus, another floral favorite for its long life and for beauty. And another extra special item, this lovely cotton. And this is a dried stem, this cotton, um, so it doesn't need water. Um, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna start with my magnolia. You can either keep it long like this. I'm gonna try to get as much as I can out of this stem. So I always wanna get as close as possible to the bottom of the stem. And that makes this pretty short. It's a little bit on the short side, but we're gonna make it work so that we get a little bit more out of this magnolia. Also, it dries beautifully, so this is one that, if it does happen to um, run out of water, it's gonna be okay. Love this sort of two-tone, um, velvety brown and glossy green. Let's do our, um, let's do our gold seeded eucalyptus. This is a sprayed stem that um, is naturally green in color. It's used a lot in wedding arrangements. Mine's a little bit floppy. Sometimes it comes in really thick and strong. So I'm gonna stem split this top piece and I'll let it fold out and drape out around the magnolia so that we just have sort of some touches of gold leaf throughout. Pretty even disbursement of, of gold. And then, now for your cotton pod, depending on the shape of the pod, you may want to stem split. I brought another one um, just to show you the difference. You could have a piece like this that's really tall and maybe you get a little bit more out of it. Um, or a piece like this that's similar where it's got kind of three little puffs. So I think I'm going to stem split this right at the joint. So now I have two pieces that I can use. And I'll start with this little puff piece that is just going to sort of gently go straight up and down. And then I can add my my accent piece a little bit to the side. So I'll sort of keep a more upward shape. Also because our mink protea also has that kind of upward shape. I'm gonna add this next just so we can get our really big elements in first and make sure we have a lot of space. 
There's a couple schools of thought for these. You can leave the outer leaves. I'm gonna strip off everything from the bottom, but you can leave these to stay on. They're difficult to reflex. It would be really cool if we could get them to fan open around the plant, but it's pretty difficult to get them to stay. So you could either strip all those off to expose the center of the plant, maybe just take a few of the center pieces. They do tend to go brown quite easily. So if your piece has some browning on it, which I do see a lot, um, you'll want to pull those off and just leave the bloom. But I'm, I'm going to add this to contrast nicely with my, my more dried stems. I'm pulling off a couple of those leaves just to open up the front of the flower. Shorten that up just a little bit. I always prefer to leave some length on it in case I have to shorten something up. You know, most of floral design, I think, is editing things down. So as you're working, continuing to edit your arrangements. Let's turn it to the back, make sure we're focusing on every side. And we can next add our Hypericum berries. These are white. Pull off all the foliage from the base of that stem. And then I like to pull off this little part too. It's up to you whether you wanna keep these tip foliage pieces. I am half and half, because they do tend to go brown faster. And I'll just let this textural spray kind of sit up in the corner. Move my leaves around just a little bit so that I can open up that shape a little bit more. <clears throat> and then maybe another Ilex right down on this lower part. So a little up top and a little down below. And now for our flower flowers. Ooh, I love when I get lisianthus that looks good. And it also really is such a good value because you get a lot of blooms on each stem. So pull off all these extra leaves that are just gonna drink up water and maybe don't add as much aesthetically to the arrangement. And I'll stem split those right along the joint. So there's one piece, there's another, and now I've preserved the length on as many of these stems as possible so that I can trim them to whatever length I need them to be. I'm going to tuck some white into these areas that don't have any flowers yet. Man, I got four pieces of Lysianthus out of that beautiful piece that I had. And don't be afraid to get in there with your fingers especially with really sturdy stems like a protea that um, are not gonna suffer from being touched. A lot of times our stems are very delicate, bruise easily, we can't touch their petals, um, but our protea and varieties that have less water content or if they're from um, areas of the world that are 
on the drier side, they're gonna have a little more flexibility. Now I'll add my last pops of pink. <gasps> Beautiful carnations. I love antique carnations. These are Crayola carnations. I'm gonna gently open them up. Mine are still pretty closed from being in the cooler. And I'll add a little pop of pink. Every side. I'm trying to face this one out because it's got a bit of a challenging stem. All right, last carnation. And then I have this lovely pink and white arrangement with some fun gold and eucalyptus to really celebrate the season. And this is just gonna open up beautifully as my carnations continue to process. Your mink protea will not open. They do dry pretty well. So if you want, you can save this, strip off all the foliage and then let it dry. Your cotton, of course, will also remain dried. It doesn't need the water that's, that's in there. Um, and even your seeded eucalyptus will, will dry nicely. I hope you'd enjoyed, I hope you enjoyed this week of designing flowers together. I'd love to know what you think and what you want to see more of. So please head down to the comments, um, and let us know.